Well, you know what, Ash? That's a really good question. I'm going to tell you what it was, but, but let me kind of talk about some of the highlights. Well, the weather was great because it wasn't great. You know what I mean? So I, I like that. Yeah. The first day, it was warm. You know, it was 70s, and it's a long movement. We get to where I'm going, and it's it's so funny because guys so guys are like, how, how do you remember this trail right here? Because the final trail, I call it a whisper. It's a whisper of the trail. You can barely see it. You can barely freaking see this thing. It just whispers off to the west, whispers off. And it's just a, a, the slightest cut through the grass, you know, slightest. But I've done it so many times. And um, we got to the spot <clears throat> that I've been going for a long time. And I think I told you guys the story my first time in the Bob when I went with the unit. And we went over three different mountain passes and when I came in contact with the forest ranger and he asked about the route that we took and he goes, I've been working up here 14 years. I've never heard of anybody doing that. <laughs> he turned me on to this one camping spot and on the map. Um, so we get there and it's, you know, it's, you're not seeing anybody and you're not going to see anybody for the next several days. Nothing. The fishing was sparse the first day and a half, you know, it was, uh, kind of mediocre one of the highlights i i i can i kind of pride myself at seeing all of the nature <laughs> mm -hmm. you know i'm going to be the one who goes look at that or look at that or see that or you know i'm going to see it because i'm always looking i'm always wanting to see something and sometimes it's small you know mm -hmm. oh look at western tanager you know it's a western tanager see the yellow body red head and it's a beautiful bird you're only going to see him out here but other times so as we're camping at this spot um, I'm up early as I, as I always am, you know, because the earlier you get up, if you get up before sunrise, you know, the more, the greater the likelihood of seeing shit like elk and, you know, mule deer right in your campsite or, or whatever it is. But, um, I'm collecting small wood and I'm just, just looking across the river and I see movement. You know how you see movement, but you're not sure if you see mm -hmm. movement, you know what I mean? But movement catches your eyes. And across the river from me is a massive rock slide. So it's a rock slide between big towering pine trees. And the rock slide goes into the river. And this rock slide's been there forever. You know, 100 years, whatever. But it's been there a long, long time. And these are gigantic boulders. I mean, you know, each boulder is several tons. Um, but I see movement and I see color that is out of place. And I'm like, what in the hell is that? Because it's reddish. So I, one of the best things I always take with me on those trips is a full set of binos. You know, don't skimp on that. I mean, I, I, I like to pack light, but in an area like that, you want to go full freaking bino because you don't want to miss shit. Mm -hmm. So I grab my binos and I look and boom, it's a red fox. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, cool, red fox. <clears throat> now, you've seen red foxes here in North Carolina. They're tiny. This is a Rocky Mountain, so they're like uh, they're like coyote size, wow. you know. They're they're big, man. They're it's a big, big. But then I see other movement. I went, holy shit! It's a kit. She's got a kit with her. Hmm. And as the sun starts coming up, four of them, wow. four kits. And now they're right across the river. They're thirty-five. Um, they're forty yards away. Uh, and she's keen to me. She sees what I'm doing, but she knows there's a natural barrier there. Right. She doesn't give a shit. And these kits are like, pup, they're puppy dogs. That's what they are. And they are bouncing from one rock to the other. They're just going <laughs> bat shit. And she would go out just like that and catch a ground squirrel and bring it back, rough it up, and they would just go bat shit and pull it apart. And then she'd go get another one. I mean, they were living large, bro. Living large. So they had a den within the rocks. And it was killing me. I'm waiting for somebody to wake up because I know as soon as, you know, the sun gets high enough, they're going to either go out on the hunt or um, seek shade or whatever it is. So Rebecca got up and I said, hey, check this out. And I showed her and she was like, holy shit, because these little freaking kits are just, they were adorable. I mean, they were <laughs> spectacular, you know, but it became a thing every morning. And finally, I just started waking people up because they were like, I want to see him. I want to see him. I said, but if you get up at freaking eight in the morning, you're not going to see this shit, bro. Mm. That's too late. 
(laughs) shit's freaking shit's going like up into altitude or you know seeking higher ground where it's cooler you know you got to get up early that's when like the elk come down and drink out of the river and stuff like that beyond a certain time it's going to get sparse that was really freaking cool because um i'd never seen you know kits like that i've seen plenty of red fox and you know coyotes and all this crap another thing that we brought a guy and he might be on the squad now um because he was like holy shit he didn't even know about it so he thought he he's a big fan of mine he came to a course and i nicknamed him montana john um it's first time doing anything like that 24 years old <clears throat> so rebecca wasn't the young person and i was not the old person because my buddy george went with me he was 59 mm. so i got to fuck with him about age right on I spent a lot of time with uh, Jonathan teaching him shit like navigation and, you know, orienteering. And we did a knots class out there and fire, you know, figure four deadfall. We, I just did a lot. Of, I just want to chill and I want to go fishing. You know, I want to, I want to fish. I want to glass the freaking hillsides and uh, see what I could see. I'm getting to your answer, Ash, <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to take a minute. The, I, I think the, the highlight of my trip though i'm gonna i'm gonna cut to the chase is living vicariously through others you know seeing other people happy makes me really happy if i could see it through their eyes and see them seeing stuff for the first time i get a lot of joy out of that like sluis so he's a member of the scott squad sluis came with us and sluis is a stud you know he's he's a really good freaking he's got no he's got no slowdown in him you know this guy's got freaking massive work ethic and you know, he lives in the moment and Mm -hmm. he's, he's funny as shit. He's a great, by the way, he's a good story and joke teller. He told me the stupidest jokes and they were funny as hell just because (laughs) of his delivery. His delivery was on point. But, uh, this really was the highlight of my trip because Lewis said it was the highlight of his. So it wasn't for me, but it was for him. So I got to enjoy it because he said, this is the highlight of my trip. And it may seem minuscule to a lot of you. Now, you remember where I took that video from where I said, hey, squad, end in the um, the Gibson Reservoir is there where we get picked up by a boat all downhill from here. Remember that video right there? So I'm on these grassy freaking draws that go straight downhill. It's just grass and you're walking through quakey aspen and stuff like that. And, And the vastness is hard to describe but you could see forever you know it's big sky country and plus we're up in altitude so i'm taking one of these fingers down and i look over and about 150 yards from me is sluis on another one he's coming down with jonathan in tow and they're coming down and i stop because i hear crows when you hear a murder of crows you want to stop and and take a look around this is the and some of you out here know what i'm talking about because a murder of crows is fucking with something and they're fucking with an owl a hawk, something like that. So I scan and I see the crows and I see a golden eagle on top of this freaking pine tree. And I pull out my glass and it is freaking gigantic. Mm. And you know, go goldens. You don't, you don't typically see, we see a lot of bald eagles here in North Carolina. You know, bald eagles are pretty prevalent throughout the United States, but we don't see a lot of goldens and, and they're, they're believe it or not more majestic than a bald. Mm-hmm. You know, because they're 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 bigger in girth and a little bit bigger wingspan and they're heavier. They're a very majestic bird that unlike balds, you know, you don't you, you won't see a bunch of goldens together either. You know, like balds will, you know, uh birds of a feather, that kind of thing. So I I say, Slewis, and, and he stops. He can hear me. He's 150 yards away, but it's you know, there's the noise just travels, sound travels forever. Mm-hmm. And he goes, Yeah. I said, you hear those crows? And he goes, yeah. I said, they're fucking with a golden eagle. And he plopped down, pulled out his binos, and sat right there. I could see him on this hill, and he was perfectly comfortable. You know, he had his ruck on the hill on the hillside. So he's sitting like he's in a recliner now. Mm-hmm. And he's glassing it. And this thing takes off and does a loop around us, you know, a lap. Mm-hmm. And it's freaking massive, man, massive. And we just check it out for a while. It goes away. But when I met him at the um, where we get picked up by the boat, he goes, that was the highlight of my trip right there, seeing that <laughs> golden eagle. And, dude, you know, I, I, I just – so it was my highlight, therefore. Yeah. 
you know, it was mine. I so Slewis had a couple really good highlights. The other one he had, and um, I got to have him post a picture of it on the Facebook page. He caught about a 16 inch rainbow trout. Hmm. So it's not on the vid that I posted. I should have freaking put that on there, but it was massive, man. I mean, wow. yeah, like food, like meal for two. <laughs> mm, yeah. So, you know, I caught a lot of little stuff. Um, I had another highlight um, uh, when we got to Rebecca's Island. So Rebecca's Island, I named it because uh, the first time Rebecca went up with me, we were a day behind. And so we had no boat ride. So we had to hump it 11 miles around this reservoir to start wow. and then go 10 in to meet our or another eight in to meet our party. And it's starting to get late. It's like 7.30. I know we have like two hours of daylight left. And she goes, I could, I could make it. She goes, how much, of, how much more travel is it? I said, about two and a half hours. She goes, I could make it. I said, Rebecca, I know you can, but I'm going to feel uneasy traveling through Grizz country dur- at dusk, just the two of us, you know, with mm-hmm. m- me being your security. So I pull out binos and I, there's this island in, within the river. And I'm thinking, I wonder if we could cross to that. So apostolic mantle, I saw a deer walk right when I said, I saw deer walk into it and they were, you know, like the water was this deep in that one spot. Mm. I said, yep, we could, we could cross to that. Wow. So I said, Rebecca, just trust me on this. Let's camp on that Island. And it was one of the best camping spots ever. Cause you got the sun river on both sides of you. And that day before, I mean, it even got dark. Um, she caught three species of trout. <laughs> yeah, which was freaking cool as shit. So the last night we we humped back and we stayed on Rebecca's Island and uh, I was fishing with a bead head and I look and I see these tiny, they're not mayflies, but they're like parachute flies, just white, just tiny, tiny, tiny. And I'm looking I'm, and, I'm, and they're everywhere. So I look in my little fly pack and I have one. And as quickly as I can, I tie that sucker on. And as soon as I do, I cast one trout. Boom. Next cast, another trout. Boom. Mm -hmm. Next cast, another one. Six in a row. Wow. Just by changing flies. I was catching nothing. Change flies, six in a row. Boom, 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 boom. I kept two of them and ate them. Um, But, and then one more story on that before I answer some of these questions. Um, So the trail that you walk on to Rebecca's Island is a deer trail. That's what it's deer made that trail, not human beings, you know, and you could see all the the hook prints in the mud and everything. Um, And a couple elk prints. I get up early in the morning or that night at about 3 AM. I heard crunching. And I was like, well, it could just be out. Somebody peeing, you know, one of the other guys, uh, you know, uh, footsteps, I heard right. footsteps. I get up in the morning and I go to get a pot of water from the river and I see elk prints that are, cause it rained that day before. Oh. I mean, poured. So these were fresh elk tracks, you know, big gigantic elk tracks going into the river. And I look across the river and there's mama elk looking at me, wanting to cross back. Mm. <laughs> and she takes off and Rebecca got up. And I said, Rebecca, there was an elk right there trying to cross the river. And she went, oh, I see him right there. Yeah, and so she got to see him too. Okay. <laughs> yep. But um, but it, it's so freaking Rebecca it amazes me. She didn't train for an hour, not even an hour, you know. Mm-hmm. And she and she makes that hump. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm like, damn, bro, how you feeling? I, we both had one hot spot, and we both had it on the same foot in the same spot. Mm. Yeah. But it was good. Um. You know, because like I said, we didn't have perfect weather. So, you know, you got to do contingency planning for that. Um, and you could see that shit coming in a long ways away. You know, you could forecast, all right, we have five minutes. So let's gather up as much small shit as we can and put it under a tarp. Um, so that way, after the rain lifts, we got small shit to start a fire with. Mm. All right. So, Ben, that's a great question. So check it out. Um, I use an Osprey at 36, right? So a couple of the guys had big packs. 
a 60 and an 85. Slewis had an 85. And guess what? Their packs were heavy as shit. Because the, if you have room, you're going to pack shit into it. You can only pack so much into a 36. So Rebecca's was about 30, maybe even 25. Rebecca's was 25. Mine was 35 dry. You know, weight pack. Um, but, but we had everything we needed and more. You know, I felt bad for the people who didn't have the, um, like a little teeny, because we have the uh, little teeny fold out chairs yeah. with a backrest. And man, that is money out in the woods having those chairs. Because uh, there's nothing worse than just sitting on a freaking rock or a log or on the ground being mm-hmm. uncomfortable, you know, when you're trying to kick back. Um, uh, but yeah, that, 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 um, I love that. Um, the only thing I don't like, Ben, about the Osprey is it's not a panel back because I like panel backs. I like unzipping it and seeing all the stuff right there and then picking what I need out of it. But I've learned to um, to work around it and pack shit in other areas. So in the guts, I know what's in there. It's that two-man tent. And dude, that freaking Nemo two-man tent. Talk about testing and evaluating equipment. They ain't giving those things away, you know, designed by NASA engineers. <laughs> but, bro, that thing is bad ass, man. I, I, I should do a vid just on that for the squad of yeah. setting that thing up because they would shit, man. That thing is amazing. Amazing. Um, you know, I'm watching other guys struggle with tents, putting them up. <laughs> Holy shit, this thing was unfreaking believable. I'm going to write that down because that would be a good squad vid. Uh, Nemo tent. So it, you, no matter how many of these things you do and no matter how long you were in the military and all that stuff, you always screw up packing a rucksack, a backpack, whatever you want to call it. You, you never get it right. You could do it for decades and never get it right. Mm. But for this particular trip, I've got it down pretty good. You got to, you know, pack some contingency, um, Gore-Tex and a little bit of snivel gear. And Rebecca and I had that as lightweight as possible. Dead Bird Society stuff when it comes to the uh, Gore-Tex. And we used it, man. It got chilly and it got rainy real fast. Um, But one of the things that I am going to, one guy had one, uh, uh, just a small tarp. Just a small tarp. So uh, I'm going to carry, because it's going to take up no room or no space, one of those emergency blankets with me, those um, Mylar blankets. Mm -hmm. And not for a blanket, but just for a tarp to, like, cover packs and um, um, uh, tinder and shit like that in in the event the weather freaking comes in. But if you see the size of it and how it fits into the pack, I have... Yeah, I've got to do I've got to do a redo on um you know the backpacking one that I did. Remember when I had this stuff in the pack? Because some things you you have to have like a ketadine freaking camp bag so everybody could share. You know, so you have a water source within your campsite. Granted, up there you could probably drink right out the freaking rivers and streams, but you don't want to fuck around. You know, it, it, there could just be a dead animal upstream. Right. Nobody's pooping in it. There's no trash or anything like that. But you know, there um, there's a lot of dead. You, you could run into a lot of carcasses up there. Yeah, sure you do. I mean, it's very common. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Larry, hell yeah, man. No LOL on that one. We all brought bourbon, uh, and whiskey. I, I bought some stuff in Great Falls, uh, bourbon that was made in Montana and it was good, you know, yep. Good to go. Good to go. Yep. That's one of my priorities when I go up there. I want to chill at night, you know, because the sun doesn't, it doesn't get dark till 10 at night in that area. Mm. So you're up by the little fire. You're talking shit to everybody, you know, making s- small conversations, telling jokes. And um, I got the medium sized two man. And for Rebecca, for uh, Re- uh, Rebecca and me, for me, it was the perfect freaking size. I'm glad I didn't get the small two man tent. <clears throat> uh, so on the move, Pete, I use a regular like Nalgene bottle with a, with a life straw on the move. But in the base camp, we carry one of those five gallon Ketadine 
bags, ketadine, <clears throat> money, because it weighs nothing. It folds up real small, and you can put five gallons in that thing. And at the end of a long movement day, when you're up in altitude like that, you, you want to make sure you're pounding a couple quarts of water. So, <clears throat> yeah, one of you asked if uh, Jonathan caught anything with figure four. He went fishing a little bit, and um, one of the things I taught him was how to clean a trout which he'd never done. So I said, come on to the river. You're going to clean a couple trout for me because I got a couple there waiting. <clears throat> but he dug that. Yep. You got it, Willie. Absolutely. So did others bring food with them or did they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We all brought food with us. But the thing is, you know, you're not bringing three meals a day. Right. <laughs> you know, so you want, you want to forage. You want to, you, you, you know, you, you want to catch fish. You want to, you need that because the meal, that breakfast or dinner, it's enough. It's not filling you up, right? but it's enough. <laughs> right. So, you know, there's no, I lose weight on those, but I don't mind, man. It's freaking awesome. You know, it's just, it's a really, really good time. Does the Bob have Uber eats? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, uh, Rebecca's got good stories from her clients. She's trying to tell her clients, you know, um, about this thing she's doing and they they said shit like do you have to like reserve a campsite <laughs> it's like bro we're not going to freaking you know mm -mm. pebblestone national park <laughs> mm -mm. 